Welcome to interview questions on statistics. Today's question is explain Z test. So previously we have seen what is T test. So now let's look at Z test. So initially you could say Z test is kind of similar to T test in the way we generally calculate or we perform the statistical method. But yeah, there are some differences. If you compare Z test and T test, there is obvious uh, an important reason why we use Z test. So Z test would generally be useful when the variance of that particular sample is actually known. This is where it's different from your T test. Your T test, the variance is un is not known. So if the variance is actually known, we can probably use this Z test. And also the sample size, if it's more than 30, that's when Z test would become really useful. If it's less than 30, we probably can use T test normally, but yeah, if it's more than 30, Z test would make a lot of sense. And also, obviously it's this particular statistical test is actually performed in order to check if two population means are different. So this is what, which is actually similar to T test. Even we perform T test in order to see how different one population mean is from another population mean. So even the Z test similarly is also used for the same thing. Used to find if one population mean is varying or how much is it varying from another population or if they are different or not. And in order to get this test as accurate as possible, the distribution of the particular sample is expected to be normally distributed. So we do expect that the sample has to be normally distributed. If not, either we may have to use any other method or probably we may have to normalize the distribution or convert it into a normal distribution because Z test would only give proper accurate results if the particular test is supposed to be or if the particular distribution is actually going to be normal or not in terms of distribution. And obviously in this case, when compared to T test here, Z test, it requires standard deviation. So the standard deviation of the sample distribution must be known here in order to actually perform the Z test. Now, for ex if you have to give an example for Z test, let's say if someone have claimed that they have discovered a new cancer curing medicine, obviously cancer is a terminal disease and any new medicine would really help it help to uh, prevent cancer or probably fix cancer disease. So if someone seems to be claiming that they have discovered a new cancer curing medicine, you really want to make sure that it's actually true or not. So we would probably perform a simple Z test or we would apply this Z test in the hypothesis testing. So let's say the in the hypothesis testing, the null hypothesis would be the cancer curing medicine. It's actually true. What he has claimed is actually true. And the alternate would be it's likely false. So we would use this Z test in order to check the distribution or we try to uh, apply the theory. We probably get some data from that cancer curing medicine and we get some sample solves as well. We try to test it on some subjects and then we would get some results. So we would compare the samples of those two, right? And using the Z test. So when we perform the hypothesis testing, we would probably get to know if it's actually true or it's not. So in these kind of uh, scenarios or these kind of large scale situations, or when we say, let's say the sample size is actually big. So we could use probably the Z test instead of T test. T test would be useful if it's a small sample and we don't know the variance. So that time T test would make more sense. But in general, Z test is way more accurate than your T test when it comes to a bigger sample size or when we know the variance and we know the standard deviation as well. So that's where the Z test will make a lot of difference.